welcome back students we had started learning about kingdom animalia if you remember that it was divided into 10 different phyla we have already completed the first two phyla that is phylum porifera and phylum cylindrata the simplest of animals in the animal kingdom so today we'll be go will be continuing with the rest of them okay so if you remember that the part the 10 phylum that is phylum porifera phylum cylindrata platyhelminthes nematoda annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata protocordata and chordata so the first two we have already completed and we saw that they are very simple in organization which do not have any coelom and neither triploblastic has started okay we just learned that cylindrates were diploblastic in nature so now we are going to start with phylum platyhelminthes the third phylum of the animal kingdom so you can see that this uh, phylum platyhelminthes basically it's called flat worms of course it's because of the organization of the body that is dorso ventrally flattened body dorsal surface and the ventral surface of an animal if it's completely flattened it's called dorso ventrally flattened body you see the examples tapeworm liver fluke and planaria these all organisms are dorso ventrally flattened tapeworms are found in the small intestine liver flukes are also found in small intestine but mostly in animals but planaria is a free living organism it's not a parasite tapeworm and liver fluke both are parasites okay so other exam other characteristics of this phylum they are triploblastic in nature and we have already learned what do you mean by triploblastic that is if the body has developed from a three layer structure ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm then they belong to triploblastic organisms okay so in the first two phylum triploblastic was in there that is the first phylum was porifera it was having only cellular level of differentiation no tissues were there in the second phylum cylindrata diploblastic nature had started that is where they were they had developed from a two layered structure but triploblastic nature starts from the third phylum it is easy to remember triploblastic 3 that is triploblastic starts from the third phylum and continues to the till the last phylum okay bilateral symmetrical of course you know if you are able to divide uh, if you are getting two equal halves if you divide it through one plane it's bilateral symmetry they are acylomate organisms what do you mean by acylomate acylomate means no coelom coelom will be present only if the digestive tract has completely developed so here it is not developed okay tissue level of differentiation because of tissue level of differentiation coelom cannot be formed okay so this is the anatomy of the flatworms okay since they are parasites you can see here the heads the head it's modified or it is uh, designed in such a way it can do its function properly it's having a hook like structure to just uh, um, uh, hook itself to the small intestine inside the small intestine and suckers to suck the nutrition from that and the body you can see it's completely flattened okay and then coming to the planaria you can see the planaria which is a free living organism it is also having some tissue like things inside its body okay but the coelom has not still developed it, and this is a liver fluke it is also a parasite so you can see it is having a oral sucker to suck the blood of the other organisms and then you can see inside some tissues have developed okay so it is having tissue level of organization but coelom has still not developed fine coming to the next phylum phylum nematoda so this is also consisting of worms so the three worms the phylum consisting of worms are phylum platyhelminthes the second is nematoda and the third one is also worms only so let us see what are the characteristics of phylum nematoda and see observe the body of these worms are they dorso ventrally flattened no they are called cylindrical they are cylindrical in shape but do they have segments no okay so these organisms are having cylindrical unsegmented body 
examples roundworm pinworm and filarial worm okay and they are all triploblastic in nature they are parasitic all the three of them are parasitic in nature bilateral symmetry and the most important feature of phylum nematoda is presence of pseudocoelom till phylum third phylum it was a coelomate that is porifera cylindrata and platyhelminthes were a coelomate no coelom but here since the organs have slowly started developing it is having a false coelom and that's called as a pseudocoelom and no real organs pseudocoelom these two are points are interrelated okay and to make it more clear about the pseudocoelom just observe this picture here children you see this blue color lining it is a ectoderm okay and this yellow color is a endoderm and the red color is a mesoderm but can you see that the mesoderm is lining only the inner part of the ectoderm if it was lining the outer part of the endoderm also that is the mesoderm is actually getting divided into two layers and then that is the space in between that is called as a coelom uh, but here it hasn't happened and the digestive tract has not completely developed but a sort of cavity is there and that is called as a pseudocoelom clear that pseudocoelom is identifying features of uh, phylum nematodes okay so if you compare nematoda and phylum platyhelminthes platyhelminthes was a coelomate whereas nematodes are pseudocoelomate now anatomy of nematodes you can see here the anatomy the mouth and the pharynx and you see the in uh, the elementary canal is not properly developed it's only on the on the process of developing and the pseudocoelom that the false coelom is from this blue color it is the false coelom fine and here other example which are the examples of nematodes we had learned it was round worm pin worm and filarial worm okay filarial worm causes a disease called filariasis and that is actually spread by the bite of mosquito culex mosquito you know this filarial worm it actually grows in the lymphatic vessels so when the mosquito bites a person if he is suffering from this filariasis the eggs will be transferred from one person to another and that is why the people suffering from filariasis they have such type of very fat legs because of accumulation of lymph the lymph vessels get blocked it's also called elephantiasis okay coming to the third phylum that is phylum annelida examples here also is the third phylum also it is made up of worms earthworm leech and nerus so when you are comparing and learning these three phylum it's easier for you to differentiate because they are all basically made up of worms okay but you see the body did you find any difference don't you see their body is having segments yes so they are cylindrical body but have a segments on the body okay and phylum annelida example earthworm leech and nerus true coelom has developed here nematodes the uh, there were no real organs but coming to the next phylum you can see the advancement the real organs start developing the complete uh, elementary canal has come formed so it is having a true coelom so remember triploblastic nature started from the third phylum continued to uh, then uh, continued to the last phylum similarly true coelom starts from the fifth phylum that is annelida from there onwards all other phylums will be having the true coelom fine triploblastic was for uh, uh, cylindrates and triploblastic from third and continued okay now coming again back to phylum annelida it has an organ level of differentiation that is why true coelom is present triploblastic bilateral symmetry that's all already you, you know now coming to this annelid body plan you see the body this is actually the body of the leech and this is a nerus if you see the body you see it's having segments that is a identifying feature as i said and the presence of true coelom is also another uh, identifying feature so here uh, you inside you can see the digestive tract has completely developed it has a proper excretory system also metanephridium etc which you see here and this is nerus you see in nerus the head part you see this is called prostomium 
peristomium, antennae, head, eyes, everything has developed properly. And you know the segments in this phylum, they have uh, each segment has a separate function to do. You know they are separate segments which are responsible for reproduction also as it is seen in earthworm. Okay, and that part is called as clitellum. So, segmentation has started in annelids and it will continue in the next two phylum. Okay. So, let us have a small review of these three phylum, platyhelminthus, nematoda and annelida. So, this will help you to differentiate. Okay. So, you may get a question to differentiate between them or give the similarities also. Suppose, you, you, get, you are given the characteristics like this. Okay. So, in one phylum this characteristic is given, you have to write the same for the other two. So, pause, write the answers on your own and then check your answers. Okay. So, phylum nematoda you see is a cylindrical body. So, what about the other two? Platyhelminthus dorsoventrally flattened body and in annelids it is a cylindrical body. Okay, but cylindrical segmented body. Okay, in annelids it is cylindrical segmented body. Then in case of uh, segmentation, if you are particularly telling about, uh, about the segmentation, unsegmented body in palatihelminthus, seg unsegmented body in nematodes and in annelids it is segmented body. What about the coelom? No coelom in platyhelminthus, pseudo coelom in nematodes and true coelom in annelids. So, when you learn, you compare porifera and cylindrata, then compare these three worm phylums. This will be easier for you to remember the characteristics and do not forget to uh, learn the examples also. Platyhelminthus examples you remember, it is a tapeworm, liver fluke and planaria. Examples of nematodes, roundworm, pinworm and filarial worm. Analytes, you remember, it is a leech, nearest and, okay, that's all. I hope you have understood it. We'll meet again later. Okay, keep learning.